Good evening, everybody. Come on in. Let me make sure my Instagram is on. <laughs> Welcome to Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews, a.k.a. Tanya Knows No Limit. Thanks for tuning in tonight. I hope everybody is having a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend so far. I know it's just Friday, but it's the beginning of the holiday weekend. And hopefully, a lot of you guys are off this weekend and Monday. <laughs> but um, thanks again for tuning in today. I got my little Santa hat on, representing them Huskers. I'm going to wear uh, my little Santa hat when I do my lives <clears throat> so I can give y'all a little, a little jolliness. <laughs> Ah, but anyway, you guys, come on in. Please make sure you like the video. Um, please subscribe to my channel if you're just strolling through um, or just happen across my channel. Please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And also, feel free to share this live to your social media platform, whether it's your uh, Twitter, uh, Facebook, Instagram, whichever one that you use. Thank you very kindly. Um, tonight, we're going to be speaking about Black Ink Crew. And I don't know why. I guess it's just that I've been so busy. I mean, I've been working around the clock. Um, Y'all know I work and I have a um, cake decorating business as well. Whew, that's been really busy um, lately. I was up this morning at, oh my God, I think like 4, 4.30 a.m. I had two big um sheet cakes that i had to make this morning and they had to be done before i think three o'clock yeah like three o'clock and they were for a seniors um like you know for the elderly like a seniors um dinner it was called jingo and mingo um if you go over to my facebook page tanya's delight slice by slice you can see the two sheet cakes that I made this morning for the seniors. So it was a really nice event, you know, something for the community. So, you know, I was glad to be a part of that. But anyway, um, back to this uh, Black Ink crew. I didn't even know that the episode started coming back on again. And this is one of my favorite shows. It did not nobody tell me. So I had to basically um, watch all those shows like one, two, three, four shows just to get caught up to come to do this live for you guys. So here we go. Oh yeah. And it's season seven, season seven, episode 14. And it was called the Black Ink Survivors Club. Um, as usual, if you have anything to say about the, the uh, show or any of the cast members or about the live, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, let me know how you feel about, you know, the episode and whatnot. But, um, Let's see, where do we start? Oh my God, so much happened. So much happened. Um, well, first, I'm going to give a little recap of last episode. So, last episode, Teddy and Tati, you know, his, uh, mm, what do you call them? They, weren't, they, aren't to, they aren't in a relationship. I guess the girl that he's kicking it with, you know, Tati, um, they were beefing because uh, sees he had through a, um, 80s party and Tati, I don't know if she invited this other guy or if he just showed up at the party, but either way, she had got so sloppy white girl wasted, no pun because she is white, but, um, she had got so white girl wasted and was up there, you know, all over this man and, you know, all over him. I mean, touching him, he's caressing her. They grinding and winding and, you know, all this, that, and the third. And so her and Teddy started beefing over that. Um, and then Bay, you know, she, uh, was engaged or is engaged and her mother was like, you know, being persistent about her getting married before she went back to Korea, because her mother's here, you know, just visiting. Um, so she, I guess Bay felt pressure to get married, and they had to do it within a few days. So being her father's in here, 
Um, he's still in Korea, and plus, they don't mess with her father because he is like really, really abusive and tried to kill him several times. So they don't mess with that fool. But um, anyway, she asked Caesar, you know, to step in in his absence and you know, ask him to give her away at the wedding, and he obliged. He was gratefully accepted it, and regardless of how Caesar felt about Alex, Donna, oh shit, I hate saying that boy's name. I need to uh, look up his real name. I hate saying, oh shit. That's just, I don't, who names himself, oh shit. But anyway, anyway, and his baby mama. So, um, Bay invited all of them to the wedding anyhow, regardless of how Caesar felt about it. Um, let's see. Alex got fired. Donna got fired for the 943rd time. <laughs> and even Sky got fired for lying to Caesar about opening her own shop called Her Little Secret Boutique. And Donna, Alex, and Caesar um, got into a huge fight, like a huge fight. And oh yeah, let's not forget Teddy tag team himself in the fight as well. Um, they jumped him. They jumped Alex. I, I, I can't. I. I was appalled. I'm telling y'all, I was appalled. Like, what's wrong with Caesar? What was his problem at the wedding rehearsal? Um, it seems like he every little thing sets him off, or like he's just always so angry now, you know, nowadays. And I don't know if he's bipolar or what. I think that's what it is. I think he's off his mess. But like at the um rehearsal party, he kept asking Alex and Donna, do y'all have something to say? Do you got something to say to me? They was like, um, why would we have something to say to you? And he was like, oh, so y'all ain't got nothing to say to me? And they just standing there like, uh, no, we don't have nothing. Oh, oh so y'all going to be like that? Y'all gonna, y'all ain't going to play me. And he just gets up and stumps over to them, like, all aggressive and stuff. And then out of nowhere, Teddy. Just come. I don't know where Teddy came from, but he came out of nowhere. I didn't see him get up from his chair. Last I saw, he was sitting with Toddy. Um, well, not with Toddy, but um, he was sitting on the couch or something. And then he just comes running behind Alex and sucker punches him on the side of his head. Like they really jumped Alex. Like jumped Alex. Did y'all see it? It was awful they did him worse than remember the guy that um okay remember the guy that sky didn't like the new guy sees hired in uh and uh where was it at was it louisiana yeah at the new shop down there and she didn't like him they got into it she slapped the taste out of his mouth he hit her back they ended up jumping him, Molly walked him, you know, in the in the grass in the front of the uh building. But they did Alex worse than that because Alex did not deserve getting jumped. He did nothing wrong. Like he did nothing wrong. And then on top of that, he weighs all but maybe a hundred and forty pounds soaking wet. Seas look like he's a good I don't know. He's kind of solid. He looks like he's maybe a good 220, maybe. Teddy? <laughs> Teddy? I'm, I'm sure he's about a good 222. I mean, I'm not laughing at their weight because I'm a thick girl. I'm a, I'm a thick girl. I'm, I'm saying <laughs> they like half a ton. Oh, the, the, the man weighs about 140 pounds soaking wet. They had no reason to jump him. Like, why did Teddy feel the need to come out of nowhere and sucker punch him in the side of his head? And then the knot they put on top of his head. Oh, my God. I thought the knot on Cardi B's head was something to talk about. <sighs> when I saw that knot on uh, Alex's head, I just felt so bad. I mean, that thing was just sitting up there like a little planet on the top of his head, just sitting up there. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry. I I shouldn't be laughing, but it uh, it it was it was pathetic. It was pathetic. That was so dirty. See, see, that was dirty. That was dirty. That was dirty. And it's like um, Alex thought he was doing the right thing by as he normally does when C's and Donna get into it. He just chills. He sits back in the cut. 
because they get into it so often. Donna has been working with C's for years and they argue all the time. C's fires her all the time and then she rehires herself all the time. It's like a love-hate relationship, you know, and it's been that way for years. So what C's and Teddy did, that was just dirty. That was low down. I was appalled. I was so appalled. I've never seen C's and Teddy jump anybody on the show that didn't deserve them calls. He did not deserve that. He did not deserve that. And then Seas gets up the next morning like nothing happened. Um, He comes walking through uh, with his little tennis rackets and <laughs> golf clubs and all this kind of... He going to play golf. He wants to play golf. He wants to play tennis like the Williams sisters. I mean, he's just all in a good, good spirit and upbeat after he totally pummeled this man. And he gets up like nothing happened. I'm like, oh, it's a new day. I slept well. I feel good. Moving on. While Alex has a big old knot on the side of his head. And I think Donna probably lost one of her eyelashes in the scuffle. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she did. But um, <laughs> what confuses me the most was why did Bay allow that to happen at her wedding? Like one minute, she's like... Um, I don't care what C says. Donna, Alex, and oh shit, they are all coming to my wedding. I don't care what C says. This is my wedding. Those are my friends and they are invited regardless of what bipolar C says. And then you allow C's and Teddy to darn near kill Alex at your rehearsal party. And you just sat there. You just sat there and you just looked like you just sat there frozen, like didn't say anything. And this is your rehearsal party. This is your wedding weekend. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. But I got to get my props to, uh, to Donna. Donna, that's my girl. That's my kind of girl. I will go with her anywhere. I will ride with her anywhere. Um, one thing I don't do and I've never done from, Oh my God, till I can, till like 12 years old, that far back. I have never hung out with people that I know is afraid to get down if we have to get down. Never. And I'm a grown woman. I'm a whole grown woman now. And it's still the same way. I mean, I don't condone fighting, but I don't be hanging with no punks. Never have, never will. <laughs> Donna. She got down for her man. She had Alex's back. I mean, everything happened so fast. She was with it. I mean, if y'all did not see the episode, y'all have to go watch the episode. At least fast forward it to the part um, where the fight was. Because they was moving so fast. I mean, Teddy flew out of nowhere. Caesar flew out of nowhere. Alex, I mean, he was on a table. Then he was being pulled across the floor. Donna was like right there on Teddy's back, just punching him in his back the whole time. Oh my God, it was it was a mess. She was trying to get them off her man. So you know what? I give my props to Donna because I can't stand a female that sits there and let her uh, man get jumped. I mean, you might not win, but still... <laughs> <laughs> but still, and then you got these two men who's over 200, well over 200 pounds, and her man is a good 140 pounds soaking wet. I would have pulled out my mace, my stun gun, whatever is closest to me that I can reach, and we would have, oh my God, we, oh Lord Jesus, that reminds me, that reminds me, one time, oh God, this was a while back, <sighs> how far back? Eh, it was a while back. My son was a teenager. I remember that. But he was going to the Boys and Girls Club. And he had kept complaining to me about some guys always messing with him. My sons don't bother nobody. And I know this. Facts. I know this. I get enough feedback from parents, from teachers, from principals, from coaches, from everybody. Everybody. Family on how well my, behave my sons act when I'm not around. So, facts. Um, but he kept coming home complaining about these guys. And I'm like, okay, you know, eventually we got to talking to the administrators, you know, they was going there after school, um, you know, and on the weekends and things like that. And, you know, it's the boys and girls club. There's going to be, 
I used to go to girls club when I was little. So it's, it's drama everywhere, including the boys and girls club. Um, but one day I had walked in to pick them up and they were in a gym where all the kids be at the end of the day. And they were in a gym and I walked through the gym and I could see him shooting basketball, shooting a basketball at the end of the gym. And he was all by himself, all by himself, just shooting. Cause you know, he played basketball, football, track, wrestling. You know, my boys is like, you know, really athletic. And so he was just shooting, practicing on his shots. And lo and behold, I'm calling his name. Like he's not hearing me because it's so loud. Cause it's, I go through this every time I pick them up. It's just so loud. The kids can't hear you when you call their name because of all the other kids. And so anyway, next thing I know, these two boys jumped down off the, um, off the, uh, risers and just jumped my son, like right in front of me, like right in front of me. These are all teenage, teenage boys. And I'm up there screaming and yelling, like, what is y'all doing? What is y'all doing? Because at first I thought they were playing. Like, first I thought they were playing because I didn't know who the boys was. I had just called and complained about the boys. I didn't know what they looked like. So I'm thinking they playing. But then, real quick, my son flipped one of the boys on the ground. He was just giving it to him, just giving it to him in his face, <clears throat> tearing him up. The other boy jumped on my son's back, and he was beating him in the back of his head. Like, that's when I knew they ain't playing. So I dropped all my stuff. I was yelling and screaming. Nobody could hear me. None of the teachers, the administrators that was in the gym, nobody could hear me because it was so loud. So I just ran over there, jumped on top of the boy and started giving it to him. Like you ain't about to jump my son and I'm standing right there and don't nobody see nothing because of all the chaos in the gym. And the boy, he leans back and looks at me like he turns over and looks at me and he realized I'm a whole grown woman and he just sits there and I'm like no nah, no nah, don't stop now don't stop now y'all big and bad to drop my son we can all go outside we can all handle this but anyway then somebody comes the administrator sees what happened what's going on they come over they break it all up tell the boy you don't hit no woman da, 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 da. I'm like no nah, we can take this outside matter of fact call his mama Call his mama. I'll call my son's dad. We can all handle this outside. But anyway, they suspended him for a while. They ended up getting kicked out because they kept messing with other kids. But one thing for sure, two things for certain, his parents never, ever, ever contacted us or contacted the administrators about me because I didn't care. You jumping my son. I don't care if it's my mama, my son, my cousin, my friend. I'm not going to stand there and get somebody jump. So watch somebody can jump. So anyway, again, Donna, good looking. That's, that's how you do that. <laughs> that's how you do that. But again, it was so unnecessary. Um, as far as like what's been going on lately, a lot of people are on YouTube, you know, talking about other issues. Um, I won't say their names, but it involves a lawsuit, and a lot of us has been following it and doing commentary. I've done some as well as myself. Um, but in that case, if I was Alex, I would have pressed charges on both of them. Him, I mean, it was so unnecessary. He got he got towed back. He got faded. <laughs> And that's an inside joke, just in case my homegirl, <laughs> Sam, is watching. The one that I do, uh, the sisters um, from a this, the sisters from another Mr. Movie Reviews. <laughs> you got to check out our uh, videos that I've uploaded on my channel, but she's a hoot. But anyway, um, then Caesar, he had that little, that 30-pound uh, midget. Ooh, not midget, not midget. Can't say that. Um, I think they like to go by little people or a little person or something. So anyway, my bad. Um, he had this little person carrying his heavy, um, bag of golf clubs <laughs> while they were going golfing. Did y'all see the little man? Like he was, he was so small and he was so little and his Caesar's bag was like three sizes, the weight of the man. And it had a whole bunch of metal golf clubs in it. And the little man was struggling. He was struggling. Oh, my God. The bag was so big and heavy. And he was just a waddling, you know, trying to... <laughs> just trying to keep up with C's and everybody. And even Walt was like, C's. You know, I love how Walt talks. He's like, C's, man. The bag is too big for the homie. 
But anyway, he didn't care. I'm like, I don't know what C's was on this episode, but he was a hot mess. <laughs> and then when Bay got the phone call from her husband, I mean, her fiance, uh, talking about, you know, he, um, he needed her. Because his father had literally just passed. So she decided to go back to her fiance um, because he was having a moment, as he should, because his dad just passed. And I ain't going to lie, Lord, forgive me. But when I saw that little person, that little man, his little legs trying, trying, trying to run and catch up with Bay. <sighs> Oh my God, I was in tears. <laughs> I was in tears. Like, Bay is in this golf cart and she's like um, driving across the, you know, across the grass. And the thing is going pretty fast. And Cease is like, where is she going? She's leaving with her wedding is tomorrow. And he was like, man, go get her. He's talking to the little guy, like, go get her. And the man just like, okay. And he starts running and running in his little legs. I'm like, are you seriously, did you seriously tell that little person to go chase down Bay, who is driving at least, at least 25 miles an hour in the golf cart? That shit was hilarious. I'm telling y'all, God forgive me. <laughs> Ooh, God forgive me. That was so funny. I was, I was, y'all gotta watch the show if y'all didn't watch it. That was so funny. But um, anyway, <laughs> sees you are so wrong again again but and another thing um i wanted to talk to y'all about how do y'all feel about teddy forgiving tati so easily like uh last episode like i said um she had got white girl wasted no pun because she is white and she was grinding and dropping it like it's hot up and down all around you know on that other guy and had teddy looking like a straight up fool he was so embarrassed and hurt and her excuse was when they finally, when he finally gave her the time of day and sat down with her, you know, because she kept begging him, can we please talk? Can we please talk? You know, he finally was like, what? What do you want to talk about? And her excuse was she doesn't really know how to relay her feelings or convey her feelings. Um... Did I miss something? I mean, he was like, but I really like you. And she was like, and I really like you. And I was like, eh. <laughs> and <laughs> then he said, give me a hug, Tati. And they hugged and that was it. Like, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> I get it. They decided to make their relationship official um, after all that. But I get it. When you first meet someone and you really feel in them, you might, um, you might go out. You might even crash at each other's house. Crash at each other's house. Um, but that does not make you a couple. And that's where a lot of folks get it misconstrued. And I don't, I mean, there's nothing wrong with them committing to each other. But did he at least make her get tested first? Like, did he at least ask her, did she sleep with that man last night? I mean, she just left the party white girl wasted with her arms around a whole nother man and his arms around her and left Teddy sitting there stuck on stupid with everybody staring at him like, dude, what's up with your girl? Why is she dancing and swinging all around that man? Why they grinding? Why they, I mean, and then she left and everybody was like, where's she going? She, she was gone. <laughs> Tati left and never came back. Never came back. And he and he was just sitting there like, what, 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 what just happened here? What just happened here? And then he make up with her after. I mean, literally, all she said was, "I'm sorry. I just don't know how to relay my feelings. I don't know how to say how I feel." That was her excuse. For what she did. 
the previous night. And then the next morning, everybody had to explain to her what she did the previous night because she couldn't even remember. At least that's what she's saying. So is this how this new age couples get down? I mean, is this how they get down? Mm -mm, I can't. I just can't. Mm -mm. There's too much stuff out there <laughs> to be doing all that. <laughs> But anyway, moving on, moving right along. Um, what the heck this guy have on way? Like this girl came flying in like Mary Poppins in a full length fur and a bikini and some stilettos. And I don't believe that they are they were having bikini weather in New York at that time. Correct me if I'm wrong. I know this was recorded, you know, before now. You know, these are pre-recorded shows, but it is December. So, <laughs> I, we can take it back a few months. You know, I, I still don't think it was like bikini weather, not in New York at that time. Because everybody else was wearing sweaters and jeans and, you know, stuff like that. But anywho, um, she came in again, stormed in like Mary Poppins and was making it rain liquor all over everybody. I mean, she was pissed, throwing liquor all across the room because they didn't come support her grand opening to her little secret boutique shop. But she had already knew um, a few days before that they had let her know, you know what? I'm getting married. I'm trying to do this before my mother has to go back to Korea. And it's in a few days. But she still expected all of them who are getting ready for the wedding, trying on um, bridesmaids dresses. I mean, getting measured. I mean, making appointments, finding a venue, all this to take off out of town to her girl by. <laughs> <laughs> she was cutting up she was cutting up you know then C's pulled her to the side and um they ended up squashing you know they little beef because you know he realized that she wasn't abandoning him she was just you know she's growing and she's trying to spread her wings you know but um y'all need to fill me in because I still I still don't know what Sky does for Black Ink so <laughs> Therefore, you know what? She reminds me of uh <laughs> she reminds me of Tommy from Martin. Like, okay, what do you do? What do you do, Tommy? What do you do? You go where and do what all day? I mean, I still don't know what she does at the shop. So if she's doing the same thing at her shop that she does at Black Ink. I'm sure she'll have plenty enough time to make it back and forth to Black Ink whenever she needs her. So, you know, he ain't got to worry about her abandoning him. <laughs> no time soon. <laughs> but, um, y'all, what really had me gagging the most was probably how C's agreed to give Bay away. You know, that was a good gesture. I mean, it was a good gesture. But, um, I think she should have re- considered someone else because once C's realized that he was going to be giving Bay away he automatically started calling himself father of the bride just because you give somebody away does not make you father of the bride but you know he was like I'm father of the bride now and everything you know automatically became about C's what C's wants what C's wants to do um and he was really trying to play that role of father of the bride. But I wonder if he was acting that way because, um, ooh, let me get a drink. Mm. I wonder if he was acting that way because he, um, actually paid for, you know, the mansion and everything. I mean, C's had hired, okay, the mansion already came with butlers. He hired his own two personal butlers. So they had four butlers. And everybody was like, C's, you, you rolling in some big dough right now, huh? I mean, the mansion was gorge, like gorge. It was so huge. I mean, it was so huge. I don't know how much it cost to rent out that mansion, but it, it, it <laughs> I'm sure it was a lot, a lot. But you know what? Um... After he became father of the bride, 
not, but you know, that's what he wanted to call himself. Um, Bay allowed him, you know, to just act out and just cut up. I mean, he literally destroyed her bridal rehearsal party and act like it was no big deal. He wasn't apologetic. He didn't apologize to nobody for his actions. Just got up the next day, grabbed his golf clubs and his um, tennis rackets. We're like, okay, Larry, let's head out. Let's go have some fun. After he done just knocked the crap out of uh, Alex and kicked out old shit and his girl and Donna left, Alex left. I mean... People really close to her can't come to the wedding now because of him. But it's her wedding. Hmm. I don't know. I think Bay made a bad choice. She should have either had, I don't know, somebody else. <laughs> somebody besides Caesar to be her, um, to give her away. Because he took that to the head, like for real. <laughs> But then, you know, Bay, she was missing in action. Everybody kept calling her. Nobody could reach her. She had went back home, as I said earlier, because, you know, her fiance has been going through it. His father just like literally, literally just passed away. And they're trying to plan a wedding. And so she's MIA, not answering the phone and everything. But then her mom finally gets in contact with her. Um, after everybody's been wondering, you know, where the heck she at, and she tells her mom, uh, you know, her fiance, he's just way too distraught, you know, after just losing his dad, he's just way too distraught, way too sad to get married, and I get it, I mean, I didn't said it before, my mom passed away, <clears throat> excuse me, three years ago, and there's no way I could have just, I mean, mom passed this week, and I'm getting married for next week. Like, and it was crazy because when my mom passed, um, we had been, I'm, I'm like over one of few people <clears throat> who is like on the board or, you know, over our family reunions. And that's the same for my high school reunions too. But anyway, you know, I'm good at planning stuff, you know, getting, put stuff together. But anyway, um, and we have been planning the uh, family reunion, which we have never had a big north-south reunion where everybody, everybody gets together. And we never had it, so we have been planning it for a year. Um, everything was settled, hotel rooms, all that kind of stuff. Um, DJs paid for. I mean, bouncy houses with the water slides. I mean, we had everything. And mind you, I'm from Omaha. I'm born and raised in Omaha. Ma the majority of my family lives in Memphis. That's where the reunion was, in Memphis. So we were planning everything from up here, along with the help of a few other people in different cities, you know, for the reunion. And my mom passed, like, literally right before the reunion that she was looking forward to going to. And, I mean, they talking about getting married. I cannot imagine that on my shoulders. This was a reunion. And yeah, it's a lot to plan a reunion. But, I mean, it was like, should I go to the reunion? And everybody's like, but Tanya, we worked so hard. And, da, 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 da. and I was like, you know what? I know she would have wanted that because we never had a big reunion before. Um, so I was like, you know what? I'm going to go. And I'm glad I did because I met so many people I didn't know besides on Facebook, you know. All my family members was on Facebook. But, you know, in person, met a lot of people I had never met before. So it was really nice. It was really nice. But as far as them getting married and he just passed, I get it. I, would, mm -mm. I wouldn't want to, no, no, that's just too much, too much to go through. And then try to be happy at your wedding. Your dad's not there. He just passed. That's a lot. That's a lot to go through. So, um... I think that's, you know, the main reason why she didn't come. But do y'all also think, like, I also believe that it was a little bit more to it with Bay. Um, Everything leading up to her wedding, you know, at the mansion, you know, has just been a hot, boiling mess. So I'm wondering, is she also in her feelings about, you know, how C's and Teddy have ruined, you know, a very special occasion for her? I mean... 
why was she ignoring everybody's phone calls? I understand she's at home with her fiance. He's distraught. He's sad. But you're getting married that day and you're not answering nobody's phone calls all day. Um, the wedding time has passed. People have been sitting in that chapel forever and you still not answering the phone. I'm thinking it was more to it than just her, you know, her fiance, you know, being, you know, going through what he's going through. Um, I think she was kind of pissed at C's, but was too afraid to show it because he was paying for everything. I really feel that way. Like when he got up the next morning, you know, let's go play golf, ride horses, and you know, all that stuff. Bay was standing there looking like this fool caused all this chaos last night. And then he just wants us to just jump in the, you know, van and just go ride off having fun. Like he didn't destroy her entire party last night. But she didn't speak up. She didn't speak up. And then so she tells her mom, you know, it's not going to be no wedding. Her mom is like, well, what am I supposed to do? Because her mom don't speak a lick of English. Like she don't speak a lick of English. All she can do is this. That's all she does. <laughs> when they be trying to talk to her, she be like. <laughs> she cannot speak a lick of English. So she's up there like, you know, they have her like. <laughs> she's speaking her language. You know, when they have the camera only on her there, she's talking and she's like, um, I don't know what to say. You know, this is how she talks. Of course, it's in a different language, but she's like, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. Um. How am I going to tell them, you know, no wedding, you know, and, and she speaks no English. Bay knows she speaks no English. So, Bay, why didn't you call nobody or ask, answer the phone when they call so you can explain to the people who speak English? <sighs> oh, my God. Her mom was trying so hard to tell C's there's not going to be a wedding. He didn't understand her. She didn't understand C's. But she, I guess in her mind, she, I think she thought that she had got through the C's just because of her, her actions, her behavior, her, you know, or, you know, she was, she seemed like, but C's was like, oh, I can't understand her, but she's smiling. So that must mean Bay is coming. And she's like, <laughs> when they were showing the camera on her She's like, what's the problem? Why ain't nobody leaving? Why are we still sitting here? Like, because y'all don't understand each other. Y'all don't understand each other at all. <laughs> I was, oh my God, this this episode, besides Alice getting his getting the brakes beat off of him, I mean, Alice got faded. <laughs> but besides that, this episode was pure comedy. I mean, I was, y'all should have seen me. I was hollering, like crying, like I was cracking up this entire episode. But anywho, anywho, um, she was trying to tell C's there isn't going to be no wedding. Um, she was like, why ain't nobody leaving? But who was the man who actually understood her and translated to everybody? Like, I'm sure that was one of Bay's guests. Because I'm sure it wasn't Caesar's guest because he acted like he didn't know who the dude was. But anyway, he knew exactly what the lady said. And he was like, what she said was, ain't going to be no wedding. But since somebody done spent all this money, we all here, everybody dressed up. Somebody might as well get married and take advantage, you know, of the church, of, you know, all the money spent, of the cake, you know. Why not? But when Teddy got up, I was like, I know, and this is not happening. This is not happening. Sky was sitting back there. Oh my gosh, she was sipping on. Was that liquor in Sky's cup? That looked like liquor in Sky's cup. I'm telling you, she was back there lit. But anyway. <laughs> Anywho, he got up there and proposed to Tati. He was like, well, 
we decided, you know, we was going to take it to another level and we going to, you know, commit to each other. And he was like, what better way of, you know, making a commitment to each other than getting married? Like, was this chick just not in, with some other man, a whole nother man last night? Well, not last night, but, you know, a few days ago. Left you at the club. Sloppy drunk, white girl wasted, left with another man, arm in arm, kicking, rubbing each other, feeling all on each other. You know, she's all smiles, left him looking like Boo Boo the Fool. And a few days later, you forgive her. And uh, then the next day, you want to get married? Sky was heated. She was sitting back there talking so much stuff. The preacher, he was trying to read the vowels. And he was like, <laughs> he was like, Tati, do you, you know, take Teddy, you know, Teddy, do you take Tati to be your wife? And Teddy was like, lawful. <laughs> lawful like he had to throw that in like okay now you was just with another man the other day so let's make sure we read the vows exactly how they supposed to be read i'm taking her to be my lawful wife there sky was heated so, oh my God, she was interrupting the pastor, talking all loud, making snide remarks. And then the pastor kept saying, can we please, please be quiet? Can we, can we, you know, we trying to do a wedding here. But then out of nowhere, why she, oh my God, y'all, if y'all did not watch this episode, whoo. If y'all did not watch this episode, please watch this episode. I'm telling you, it's, it, it was hilarious. <laughs> they show in slow motion, Sky picking up that chair next to her. It was like slow motion, like really slow motion, like really slow. And then, bam! Right in the teddy's head. I was like, what? Did she just... Okay, first of all, Sky got some good aim. She must have played softball when she was younger. She must have. She threw that chair. And she wasn't sitting right in front. You know, she was like some rolls back. She threw that chair so hard and it hit Teddy dead in his head. Almost in the same spot that he hit Alex in his head. But I didn't see no knot on his head, so I don't know. I don't know, but she threw that chair. She could have hit Tati. She could have hit that uh, pastor. <laughs> oh, the slow motion, though. The slow motion. Y'all got to watch it. That that was so funny. <laughs> hey, Miss Lady Scoop. Happy holidays. <laughs> Girl, I'm up here. I'm... I'm almost laughing harder now than I was laughing. I'm telling you, this episode was so doggone funny. Who it was funny. But anyway, she tossed the chair and the pastor. He's looking like, what in the... Okay, first of all, Sky was cussing in the church. The pastor act like he wanted to curse after he almost got hit by a flying chair. Um, The pastor was looking like... I didn't sign up for this. I didn't go to seminar school for this. I don't fast and pray for this. He took his little holy Bible and gathered up his robe and hauled ass out that church. He hauled ass. His hand was on his face was like. It, that, that, <laughs> that was so funny. This entire episode just, I don't know. I, I i was on a roller coaster, like upset with C's, then upset with Teddy. And then, I mean, it's like, I'm, it was a mess. It was a hot mess. But that pastor, he got out of there. He said, I'm not, I didn't sign up for this. He said, I'm out of here. He literally said, I'm out of here. And then he leaves. And Bay's mom, okay, she don't speak any English. No English. 
So she's up there looking at Sky. The expression on Bay's mom's face, she was like, And then she was saying in her language, like, who is this crazy woman? Who is this crazy woman? Because she tried to grab her around her shoulders and, like, walk her out to church. After you just threw a chair through the church and hit the groom <laughs> on his head. And then you're trying to gather up Bay's mom like you're trying to protect her. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, in the end, you know, Sky, she was like, it is what it is, you know, congratulations. She gave them some hugs and they partied the night away. But do y'all think that marriage is going to last? I mean, for one, they really didn't get married, did they? I mean... They, they didn't sign no papers. They didn't sign no certificate. They just went up there and just, we'll, we'll, we'll get married. Since the bride ain't going to get married today, we'll get married. I don't know. I don't know what y'all think about that. I mean, what y'all think about the whole relationship period about Tati and that mess she pulled last episode with that other dude and then Teddy forgiving her off the bat and now they at the altar and Oh no. I oh, don't know. And then how y'all feel about Caesar's um bipolar behavior? Like I really think Caesar's bipolar. If he's not bipolar, then he's just playing crazy. And if he's not crazy, then I just think um he's gotten too big headed. Like this fame, being popular, being a celebrity having two, three different tattoo shops. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what to think about C's. He's like, the, he he's totally, totally different from the C's that I remember, you know, from when the show first started, you know, seven years ago or seven seasons ago. Um, and do y'all think Bay, you know, was secretly upset with C's? but scared to tell him because he was paying for the wedding and because he did her the honor of giving her away since her father, you know, is in Korea and she don't mess with him, you know, because he's crazy too. Y'all let me know how y'all feel. This episode, I'm telling you, it was so much. It was so much, but it was so fun. Y'all have to go watch it. Go on the man or however you watch your cable. For y'all got the, the stick or whatever you use. Um, make sure y'all watch this episode. Because <laughs> it was hilarious. But anywho, <laughs> y'all let me know what y'all thought about the episode. About the different characters. Um, put it all in the chat. Um, after the video, remember you can still comment. Um, after the video ends, after it processes, you can still go into the comments and comment. And I'll get the notifications and we can chop it up in the comment section. But in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, y'all know what to do. Stay safe, be blessed, and happy holidays.